Uh, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm Ray Billings. I'm the leader of Hardcore Robotics. Um, I'm, we've been building combat robots for 15, 16 years now. Hardcore Robotics makes it sound like it's a big company. In, in reality, it started out as a father-son project between me and my boy. Um, and it's, it's been a lot of fun. It's, it's an interesting way to spend all your money on parts. Um, but it's, it's, it's also just a lot of fun to, to have, uh, it's kind of a, a great father sense. It's, it's a way that him and I have connected, and that, that's been really cool. Um, the robot that I won with, the, the name of the robot is Tombstone. It's a 250-pound heavyweight class robot. Um, we'll show the video here in a minute so you can kind of get an idea what it is, that it, what it looks like. It's got a, got a big horizontal bar spinner in the front. And the idea in combat robotics is to disable or destroy your opponent. So it, it's, kind of, uh, it's kind of an interesting way to explore technology because you're always trying to come up with new ideas, some way to, to capitalize on this in the arena. Um, we're going to show, first, well, first off, uh, everybody watch the show. Does, do, you, do you know what the, what the what show is? Did you watch, watch it? Um, okay, I guess a better question is, who didn't watch a show, okay? Now, of those, did you, did, have you ever seen Combat Robotics, BattleBots, anything, you just didn't watch it? How many have no idea what this is and has no idea who I am? <laughs> All right, okay. So, um, we'll go ahead and show the video now. This match is from season one. It's, uh, um... Witch Doctor against Tombstone. Um, and uh, this will kind of give you an idea, and then we can talk a little more about the, the, the rules and what goes into combat robotics. It's time for the bots to battle. Witch Doctor, oh, coming up and then retreating. That's a good idea. Oh! A major shot! right now from Witch Doctor. Oh! Another one head-to-head. -head. But look at these. These bots are undaunted. Come here. Come here. This fight is ridiculous. Oh! Are you kidding me? No! Look at it! Tombstone's blade has come off! But look at this! Witch Doctor's upside down with no way to right itself. Oh, no! It's going to be rendered incapacitated. This is going to be a knockout. Yeah, I, obviously I have a lot of fun at this, okay? Um, so it, it's kind of hard to see it in video and really get an idea of how much energy is being unleashed. That weapon bar that snapped in half is about 80 pounds of tool steel. Um, at the rate at which it's spinning, the, the arena rails are made out of half-inch thick steel, and I can make a hole in that big enough to slide a Coke can through. So it, it's, it's really significant. And if you ever get the chance to watch it live, I encourage you to do it, because you'll, you, you'll have a whole new appreciation for the amount of power that's going on here. Um, Combat Robotics has been around for a while. Uh, 1999, 98, somewhere in there, I believe, is when this first started. Typically, how this works, uh, it will usually be a one-on-one -on -one sort of match. They've had other formats. They'll have uh, rumbles, where they'll have a whole bunch of robots in there. Or sometimes they've even done team matches, so you'll have two versus two, things like that. Typically, it's one-on-one. -on -one. Typically, the matches are three minutes in length. So you've got three minutes to disable your opponent. If you don't disable him within that three minutes, both robots are still running at the end of the match, then it goes to a panel of judges. And like most things that go to judges, you might not get the judgment you want. You're always trying to get the knockout. Um, 
different events use different judging criteria, but usually it's along the lines of control, strategy, damage, aggression, those things. And the cool part about this is it's, it's a very serious sport. It, it's a very serious competition. You are trying to tear each other apart when you're in the arena, but it's, it's these are the best friends I have in the world. It, you're not actually, it, it, it's a competition that involves violence, and yet it doesn't. It doesn't at all. These are the best friends I have, and it's interesting the amount of camaraderie that you have in the pits from this stuff. Um, I can remember a match a few years back where the guy that I was supposed to fight couldn't fix his robot. He, his drive motors are broken. So I loaned him some drive motors, and then we went in the arena, and then I destroyed my own drive motors in his robot. Okay? <laughs> But we would all do that because it's, it's, we would rather have a good match than get a forfeit. That, that's, that's not what anybody's about. Um, that's the basics of, of the, the, the combat part of that. Me, personally, um, he describes some of it. I've got kind of a wide, varied background. Um, out of high school, I worked in restaurants, uh, so not necessarily what you'd call a very creative position. Uh, did teach me about teamwork, though. Um, after that, I uh, worked for a company that dug water wells. And this is an interesting uh, industry to be in. First off, because almost all of your water well drilling equipment was made back around World War II. There's hardly any of it that's new, okay? And so you learn a great deal of fabrication skills because you can't run to Cragen's and buy a part. If something breaks, you've got to make a new one. And I credit a lot of my fabrication skills to that job that I had at that particular point in time. Uh, the one that ABC loves to, to bring up, they, they, they talk about it over and over again, was the time when I worked at Folsom Prison as a correctional officer. Um, I don't know why they find that so in, in amazing and, in, and they want to bring it up all the time. But it was a job that Paid my bills. I'm glad I had it. It was a good career. I eventually ended up getting hurt. It's kind of a rough, rough place to be. And I had to retire. Um, after that, for a while, I worked at a, uh, a college teaching computer networking. It was sort of a hobby of mine that turned into a job. Eventually, though, uh, that particular college, uh, they decided to switch over from being a technical college to be more of a medical college. The end result being that I got laid off. So I spent about two years building combat robots and going all over the, the country without working. And the interesting, my, my latest job where I'm working at now is at Intel Corporation. I work at the site in Folsom. So a lot of people go, oh, you work at Intel. So the, obviously that's why you got into robots. And the story's kind of interesting because it goes the other way. I, I let a friend know that I was looking for a job. He happened to work at Intel and put my name in for something. So I got called in for an interview, and I go in and I sit down. And the guy goes, okay, so how do you, how do you know your friend? And I'm trying to kind of connect the dots in his head for him. And about halfway through it, when he finally realizes who he's talking to, he goes, you, you're the robot guy. <laughs> so it's kind of funny in that regard. That we, we spent an hour and a half talking about combat robots and metallurgy and all kinds of strategies. We never once talked about the job. And, and so it was cool that, it, that I ended up getting hired immediately without even, you know, just based on my, my, my past to doing this. It was kind of cool. All right, so a lot of people will say, this is kind of pointless. You put all this time and effort into this stuff. You put them in the arena. They beat the crap out of each other. What is positive from this? So it's kind of cool. Obviously, there's a lot of stuff there that's just fun to be involved with. But it's also a great way to learn a lot of new skills, and it's a great way to help some industry partners. So the company that makes the, the drive motors, are um, those are originally from an electric wheelchair. And because I break their parts and I give them broken parts back, they've learned how to redesign these so they're much better. So it, it's kind of cool in that you get to break stuff, they, they actually give them to me now because I've given them so much feedback, which is great because I break a lot of them. Um, so there, there's some, some real industry things that, that come from this that are very helpful. It's not just big boys breaking their toys. 
Sometimes, but not always. Um, okay, so how does all this tie into being creative? Well, engineering, in a nutshell, is the question of what if. What if we did this? What if we did that? Then you start coming up with new ideas. So I'll, I'll, I'll play a video like that, and kids will come up to me afterwards, and they'll go, that was great. Why don't you put an ax on the back? Why don't you put you know, another spinner on the back? Why don't you put some armor around the tires? They'll start shotgunning ideas at you. And that's what engineering is. They're engineering. They're coming up with new ideas of how they're going to do this. It's a great way to get kids excited about engineering and science because it's cool. It's kind of, they'll learn a lot of things that they don't know that they're learning. I, I, I use the term stealth learning because they, they'll have no idea that they're actually picking up all of these skills. And so robotics in general, combat robotics specifically, it's a great way to just get kids excited and get them into engineering skills. Uh, let's see. All right. Um, so I do have one more video. Uh, this video is the actual championship match from this year. Um, so it's when I got this wonderful, super, super heavy trophy right here. So. <laughs> Yeah, I, uh, I was a little jazzed at that. Um, I, actually, when they, we were interviewing him afterwards, I made the joke that I wasn't going to leave it, I was going to sleep with it as my pillow that night. Um, so it's, uh, it, this was a year in the making, because season one, I made it to the finals, and I lost. And so I spent a year kicking myself in the butt over that, so I finally got the chance to get back in the arena and take it home. So it was, uh, it was a very surreal moment. This is the team right here. So this is me and my son and one other guy named Rick who's on the team. Um, and uh, it's, it's been a great way to connect with my son in that regard because he's an adult. He's out on his own at this point in time. So the only time we schedule time to get together to do these things is whenever we have an event. So that's kind of cool. Um, all right. So... Doing engineering, in general, is that, that whole concept of what if. Okay, what if we do this? What if we do that? So what if you grab a hunk of tool steel and spin it real fast in front of your robot? What if you build rockets and take men to the moon? What if is a big question. And if you don't get anything else out of all of this, remember this part. Never be afraid to ask that. Ask what if. That's, that's what engineering is in a nutshell. It's all about possibilities. Engineering is very creative if you let it be. And I thank you for having me here. This has been fun.